Hey everybody, it's Angela and I am back with another altered book and today I'm going to be turning this into a binder. I thought long and hard about doing sewn in pages, but I want to use this as a journal to do some Latin practice. And I started at the beginning of winter studying some Latin and I want to learn the language and be able to converse in it. And one of the things that one of the online Latin instructors was talking about was having a commonplace book in order to journal in and try to use your Latin and, you know, what words you've learned and try to string sentences together and stuff like that. So I really want a place I can practice, but I don't want it sewn in to where I feel like I can't use it because I'm going to mess it up or something. I want to be able to take pages out and put pages in and use it in that way so I don't um, I don't want it to be permanent I want it to be fluid as I learn the language so that's what I am doing and I found this uh, history of the Middle Ages book I actually had it in my stash already and I looked through my stash for everything Latin and Roman that I could find and I found that piece of jewelry that has some little charms on it that are like Alexander the Great coins or something and so I'm going to use those I have this binder ring I was thinking about changing the color of it to a more antique color but it just wasn't looking right when I put the uh, the coloring on it and trying to make a patina and everything so I decide against changing the color of the binder rings if I want to later uh, buy uh, some more of the more antique -y colored ones I can always change it out they just use a little screw to put them in so they're easy to switch around later um, but I didn't want to buy anything so I'm just using stuff that I already had on hand and all I had was silver so that's what I'm going to use and if I really feel like changing it in the future I can I also have these stickers and these are some I think just from the dollar store and I go ahead and I'm going to use these two larger almost like uh book clasps and I wind up changing my mind on this later but I am changing the color of them and also the jewelry with the little Roman coins I'm antiquing those because they were really kind of a just kind of a plain gold color and I, I wanted them to have a little bit of variation and, and look a little aged so I'm kind of aging those down as well and also, I have that binder clip. It's kind of like a bullnose clip that looks like the top of a clipboard. And it is kind of a cool color, but I want to, it's all one tone, and I want to kind of make it have, look like it has a little more texture and age to it. So I'm going to put some of the inks on that as well. And these are the Tim Holtz alcohol inks in just a lot of various colors. You can see I'm just pulling out colors and dabbing it on and, and just trying a lot of purples and silvers, golds, coppers, bronze, whatever I've got, black, I'm throwing it on there and just trying to get it a nice texture of an aged metal. And I really like how this bullnose clip turns out. And this was in my stash. Everything here is just stuff that I had. Like I said, I didn't want to buy anything. I really wanted to find an old Latin book to take apart to turn into, you know, my journal. But I would have had to buy one online. And since I had this history book and what was kind of cool about it was even though it's a history of the Middle Ages, it starts out kind of talking about the Roman Empire and has like an old map of the where the the empire encompassed um, throughout the Mediterranean. So I wind up pulling those out and using them as decoration for this binder. So there I go with all the inks and I'm going to set that aside to dry. I don't wind up using, like I said, those stickers and everything obviously, but I didn't know that at the time. Now this book was one I must have got a long time ago. I don't remember where it came from, but it has a little thing written on the Thing that says $2.99 so I probably got it at a Goodwill a long time ago and it was already ripped up and part of the pages were missing so I just took the pages out and I'm gonna put this piece of cardboard here just to strengthen the 
the binding because I am going to be putting those binder rings so I don't want the spine to tear because this is an old book I think it's oh I can't remember now it was early 1900s book so I'm taking some matte medium gel and I'm just gonna put that on there and I almost forget here I go ahead and I put the glue on here and I forget to put my um, holes for the binder ring screws and I'm like oh crap so I go ahead and I mark those and I pull it up before the glue sets and go ahead and punch those holes because I don't have a hole punch with a long enough neck um, to do it after the fact so there we go that's what I'm going to do to reinforce that spine and then I decide to just set my uh, big shot on there and leave it overnight to dry and then here I'm coming back at another time I found this map of Rome in my uh, online and so I went ahead and printed that out to use as the book cover pages for the front and back cover and then to cover up this cardboard on the spine I'm using some book repair tape you can see uh, there on the left hand side that's what it's called book repair tape and it's just kind of a fabric tape that they use for books and binder bindings and stuff like that so that will reinforce that area and then I'm using some super sticky tape on those printouts that I got off the internet I think I just I forget where I got them like Wikipedia or something like that I don't know it's just for my own personal use and I cut it in half and I'm just gonna put front half on the front and half on the back And then I'm just going to use glue stick for the rest of it just to save. I'm starting to run low on my super sticky tape and I, I don't want to buy any more. So I'm just using it on the edges where I need that extra strength. And I like this. It has kind of that maroon color which goes good with the binding of the book and with the theme. And then the binder rings, when I put them on, most mostly will cover up a lot of that book repair tape and I did do a lot of the edges with the Tim Holtz like vintage photo and stuff like that just to kind of give an aged look like I said I would have liked an aged bronze color for my binder rings but I can change those out in the future the next time I order binder rings but these silver ones will work in the meantime so I'm just using my X-Acto knife and I can feel where I had cut those holes uh, with my hole punch earlier. So I'm just using the X-Acto knife to punch through the whole thing. And then these are the little screws that hold the binder rings on there. I'm just gonna push them up from the back. So I'm just enlarging that hole I made, and pushing a screw through there. And the silver on the screw head was pretty, um, silver as you can see there sometimes I hide the screw heads uh, in between the cardboard spine and the, and the outside of the spine but I knew I might want to change this out so I decided to go through the whole complete spine and have the screw heads on the outside of the book so in order to just blend those in a little bit I am using some brown stays on just to tone down that silver on those so you don't really notice it too much and then there's how the clip turned out. Isn't that cool? I love how uh, the alcohol inks made that look. And then those are the coins. So I'm kind of, here's where I go and I'm like, man, I like these little ones better. So I decide to go with those, but then I wind up taking those off as well. Once I start deciding what I want to clip underneath that binder clip, um, I actually want to reduce the other things that are on the book. So first of all, I'm going to do like that and make it look like old book closures. And I measure it out and then change my mind, of course. And so there, I'm trying to leave room to then clip stuff underneath that clip. And then I go ahead and that chain was just a little too chunky uh, 
to put on the front of the book. So I do wind up changing that out. So I'm gonna go ahead and take off the little coins and they're, they're really cute. They're all the same image that's impressed on there, but they're different sizes. So I like that. It was funny how, you know, I found that. I also found another old, like, it's not really a postcard album, but an old, um, like, souvenir book from Italy of Roman architecture in my stash um, and some other things, yeah, that kind of had to do with Italy and Rome and, and all that I didn't really even realize I had in my in my stash so it really worked out well so now the screws are dry enough the stays on is dried so I can go ahead and get this screwed in there and the Latin is just it was something I wanted to take on at the beginning of winter I thought you know what if I'm gonna play a game on my phone I might as well get like Duolingo or something like that and learn a language and so I've been doing that in conjunction with other ways you know online learning um, I've got some books I've got puzzles I've got a lot of different things where I can hear it I can see it I can say it and I think if I change it up a lot of ways I'm more likely to learn it and that's why I really want this commonplace book to try writing in it you know try coming up with my own sentences and things like that and I think that'll just be another dimension of the language that will help me learn it so as you can see that uh, map of Italy I had got out of the book um, the first part of this book about the Roman Empire I thought about including in this and I cut it down to use and then I decide against it and here is the souvenir book and what it is is it shows like a picture of the area and then they have a transparency overlay that shows what it would have looked like a recreation of what it would have looked like back in Roman times and I had purchased this a long time ago just because I thought it was cool but I never knew what I would do with it so I'm gonna use some of those in here as tabs and tags and things like that so I really like that but I need to cut it down and I cut off this portion where the spine is and I wind up turning that into a tag later so it doesn't get wasted. But I just wanna make it smaller so that it'll fit on the front of the book. And then I use some as like little tabs and decorations on the inside of the book. And this is where I decide that you know what, with all the stuff I'm gonna have underneath this bullnose clip, I don't really need to have those stickers on the front. So that's when I decide I go ahead and take those off. And so yeah, I've been practicing on Duolingo. I've been going, I don't know, like 130 days straight. I've been practicing and, and doing stuff and I'm really enjoying it. If you're anyone who likes words and word games and puzzles and stuff like that, learning Latin is like a puzzle it's like a game because Latin is still with us it's what you know the English language the German and Spanish language all have Latin as kind of their as integrated into them and so it's just fun to see where words came from and where they originated and I'm just having a lot of fun with it I don't know what I'll do with it after I know it, but there's a lot of people online that speak it and, and I'd love to read. I look at a lot of old artwork and old illustrated texts and things that I see in Latin. So it'd be nice to be able to, to read them and a lot of plant names and things like that um, with all the gardening. Um, I might be able to use it in that regards as well. And then that book of the Roman or map of the Roman Empire was also inside the book. So I just went ahead and put that on the front. I think about putting one of those Roman coins on the front of the book. I think about attaching it to the bullnose clip, but then I decide to put the sticker on the bullnose clip instead. And I think about, I do, I think, put this, the little cover sheet that shows how old this book is and everything. I do, I think, include it in the book somewhere at the end. So that's what I have so far. I just want a little color on the front and want to be able to, 
you know, see what the book is about. Well, I found that flare that says Carpe Diem and um, yeah, I don't wind up using it in here. I'll probably use it in a scrapbook layout, but um, yeah, it was funny how many Latin things I could find when I started digging through my stash. So I'm using my We Are Memory Keepers hole punch to do a bunch of these uh, papers. And these are ones I took out of an old ledger. So I saved the, the insides of it. The cover was ruined, but I was able to save the paper. So I'm gonna use that to do my journaling on. And then I've used some of those transparency sheets there as my as some dividers and I will add a few more dividers to go with those so I want to have a couple sections one maybe for words I'm trying to memorize better or research and learn about and maybe one where I just try to record my own thoughts with the words that I already know so I use some Elizabeth crafts the sidekick planner dies I use that pocket and those two pages to create these right here, these green pages. And that green is just some hanging file folders that we had some legal size ones and we don't have a legal size file cabinet anymore. And so I'm just using it as cardstock. And then I printed out these are the some of the declension charts uh, because Latin has like five different ending declensions you know um, depending on if it's feminine or masculine or you know how many people there are and they he she me I don't know it, it's it's quite confusing and so I printed out the charts so that I could refer to them to try to get uh, my declensions done properly and to get some of them memorized so this one was just a little too big to fit on that tab. So I'm just shaving off everything I can and it just barely fits on there. So I'm putting those on some of the tabs or divider pages, I guess. And I am inking the edges, all of them. And then the tabs on the top of those pages, I had two that were just, um, yeah, blank green pages. And I put a red tab and a blue tab and that gives me three different sections in the journal. So I'm going to go ahead and put, I think this is either the fourth or fifth declension. Yep, the fourth and then the fifth declension here. And then I did like the verb declensions as well. These are noun endings. So I've got those in there and in the pocket, there's one of the tags that I made from that cutoff piece. I just put an eyelet in the top. These were just some extra printouts I had, one of Alexander the Great and one of the aqueduct systems. I put it in that pocket. I don't know what I'm gonna use that pocket for, so. Um, then I decided on these that I cut down as dividers that I wanted to round the corners. So I'm just gonna do that really quick. And then I printed out these are an old book that someone had put online uh, that was a Latin book. So I went ahead and printed it out so I can do some studying on that as well. And then I put the little Roman coins on a ball chain and put them on another one of those transparency tags, the offcuts of one of the dividers that I made and put that on the front. And then I wanna put a saying on here and so I grab my uh, Dymo labeler and I and a Latin book and I'm looking through for phrases and I think this one is practice makes perfect and so I wanted to do that in Latin the actual more like translation that they use is like um, uh, what was it like practice is the best teacher is really kind of what they use but practice makes perfect the same I, I see where they were going with that so I'm just gonna go ahead and make this out it's fun to be able to use this tool I haven't used it in a while so I always try to pull it out every once in a while I have a lot of different colors of tape and so that's fun 
but I'm just going to use black on this. And then I'm just going to cut the phrase apart a little bit. And I wasn't sure where I was going to put it on the front of the book, on one of those tabs. It kind of got lost on the front cover. And then I decided to do it right there on this first kind of tab or opening of the book. Yeah, practice best teacher is. Practice is the best teacher. I'm going to put it that right there on the front of that. And then that's pretty much all I'm going to do for this book at the moment. And like I said, I can change out what's in here at any time, what's clipped under this clip or what's put into the binding rings. And that's just great. Now I don't feel like I will ruin it with anything that I do and I will actually use it. And I can also take out the pages if I want to remove some of the lined pages and write on them outside of the book and then put them into the book. If that's more comfortable for me, I can do that as well. So thank you guys so much for watching. I know this was a little bit of a strange thing I was making, but I thought I would go ahead and film it anyway. And if you have any questions or anything, just leave me a comment down below. And thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.